Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we're diving into a fascinating topic that has intrigued people for decades. The Alcatraz Escape of 1962. Get ready to unravel the mystery, explore the daring planning process, and discover the lasting impact on prison security and popular culture. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Alcatraz Island, situated in the San Francisco Bay, holds a unique place in the history of the American penal system. Originally designated as a military fortress during the 1850s, Alcatraz underwent a transformation into a federal prison in response to the need for a secure facility to incarcerate some of the nation's most dangerous and incorrigible criminals. The decision to repurpose the island was rooted in the belief that its isolated location and harsh climate would make it virtually escape-proof. In 1934, under the direction of the United States Department of Justice, Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary officially opened its gates. Its remote location, surrounded by cold, treacherous waters, contributed to the prison's moniker as The Rock. This natural fortress was intended to act as a deterrent against escape attempts, while the design of the prison itself aimed to minimize contact between inmates and reduce opportunities for mischief or communication. Alcatraz Island, situated in the San Francisco Bay, holds a unique place in the history of the American penal system. Originally designated as a military fortress during the 1850s, Alcatraz underwent a transformation into a federal prison in response to the need for a secure facility to incarcerate some of the nation's most dangerous and incorrigible criminals. The decision to repurpose the island was rooted in the belief that its isolated location and harsh climate would make it virtually escape-proof. In 1934, under the direction of the United States Department of Justice, Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary officially opened its gates. Its remote location, surrounded by cold, treacherous waters, contributed to the prison's moniker as The Rock. This natural fortress was intended to act as a deterrent against escape attempts, while the design of the prison itself aimed to minimize contact between inmates and reduce opportunities for mischief or communication. Among the notable inmates were individuals like Al Capone, the infamous Chicago gangster who was sent to Alcatraz to serve time for tax evasion. Capone's arrival at the prison symbolized the federal government's determination to tackle organized crime head-on. Robert Stroud, known as the Birdman of Alcatraz, also gained notoriety during his time at the prison for his ornithological studies, showcasing the diverse backgrounds and interests of the incarcerated. The Alcatraz escape of 1962 was orchestrated by three individuals whose combined ingenuity and determination led to a daring attempt for freedom. Frank Morris, a seasoned escape artist, and the Anglin brothers, John and Clarence, embarked on an escape plan that showcased their meticulous planning, resourcefulness, and unwavering resolve. The escape plan was a testament to Frank Morris' meticulous attention to detail and his ability to exploit the weaknesses of the Alcatraz facility. Over the course of months, Morris carefully studied the prison's architecture, security routines, and the daily patterns of the guards. This allowed him to identify vulnerabilities that could be exploited for an escape. His deep knowledge of the prison's layout enabled him to devise a route that involved tunneling through the utility corridors behind the cells, eventually leading to the rooftop. Collaborating with the Anglin brothers, Morris orchestrated an elaborate scheme that included creating decoy heads out of a mixture of soap, toilet paper, and real hair collected from the prison barber shop. These decoy heads were strategically placed in their beds to deceive the guards during nighttime checks. The escapees ingeniously used ordinary materials that they acquired within the prison to create tools for their escape. With rudimentary tools fashioned from spoons, a broken vacuum cleaner motor, and improvised drills made from stolen maintenance tools, they meticulously chipped away at the vent openings in their cells and the utility corridors. These tools allowed them to gradually enlarge the openings, giving them access to the spaces behind the walls. In addition to the tools, the escapees were purposed discarded raincoats into life vests and a makeshift raft. The live vests were intended to provide buoyancy during their swim across the bay, while the raft was meant to assist them in navigating the treacherous waters. These innovations showcased the escapees' resourcefulness in the face of limited resources. On the night of June 11, 1962, the meticulously laid escape plan was set into motion. Under the cover of darkness, the escapees crawled through the narrow tunnels they had painstakingly created. Emerging onto the rooftop, they carried their makeshift life vests and raft. Despite the perilous nature of the undertaking, 
their determination to seize the opportunity for freedom propelled them forward. The trio launched their raft into the icy waters of the San Francisco Bay, vanishing into the night. They left behind their decoy heads as a ruse, designed to buy them precious hours before the guards discovered their absence during the morning head count. The escape triggered an intense manhunt, but despite the exhaustive efforts of law enforcement, the escapees seemingly melted into obscurity. The mystery surrounding their fate continues to captivate the imagination of the public, making the Alcatraz escape of 1962 a symbol of audacity, resourcefulness, and the enigma of the open sea. The Alcatraz escape of 1962 triggered an immediate and widespread response from law enforcement agencies and prison authorities. As soon as the escape was discovered during the morning head count on June 12, an extensive manhunt was launched. The search for Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers involved the Coast Guard, FBI, local law enforcement, and even the military. The surrounding waters were calmed, and nearby shorelines were thoroughly searched. Investigators meticulously reconstructed the escape route, examining the chiseled vent openings, the discarded life vests, and the makeshift raft. Interviews with fellow inmates provided insights into the escape plan and the dynamic between the escapees. The investigation's intensity showcased the determination of the authorities to bring the escapees to justice. The fate of Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers remains a mystery to this day. Despite the exhaustive search efforts, no definitive evidence of their survival or demise was ever found. The cold and turbulent waters of the San Francisco Bay, along with the strong currents, pose significant challenges to their survival. The question of whether they successfully crossed the bay or succumbed to its dangers continues to captivate the imagination of researchers, enthusiasts, and the general public. Numerous theories and speculations have emerged over the years. Some believe that the escapees perished in the frigid waters, unable to withstand the harsh conditions. Others speculate that they managed to reach the mainland or evade capture by seeking refuge in remote areas. The lack of concrete evidence has fueled both skepticism and intrigue surrounding their fate. The Alcatraz escape of 1962 had a profound impact on prison security and protocols, prompting significant changes to prevent similar incidents in the future. The audacity and success of the escape exposed vulnerabilities within the high-security prison system and necessitated a revaluation of existing practices. And that's a wrap on our look into the Alcatraz escape of 1962. The audacity of the escapees, the changes in prison security, and the enduring mystery all make this a story for the ages. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more intriguing content. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.